got a hunch that you are probably going to be seeing a lot more of the OpenAI Responses API format around AI talent. And in case you didn't get a chance to learn it yet, I threw together a repository with a bunch of examples that will give you a deep dive crash course into the expressive newish format that you will probably want to be using to talk to all OpenAI models. It's attached to this video. The Responses API is different from the standard chat completion style API. It kind of mushes everything all together and adds a whole lot of niceties that, well, you deserve to know about. This video is separated into chapters and you can and should feel free to jump around to the specific parts that interest you. So this repo will spin up a web server for you and you can do this using npm run dev. And we have a, a working web, uh, web server here on 5173. Now the app is called Responsible and it's a bunch of demos that show you some use cases and then shows you how to implement them. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the first one here is this basic text generation. I uh, will just, you know, write a tweet about uh, the OpenAI uh, responses uh, API and how important it is to learn. And we're just gonna click uh, generate response. This is basically just hitting an API that I have uh, over here. You'll see we got, we got this back. And each one of these, I tried to show you what the response looks like. So you can kind of get a feeling for what happens. So you'll see that it has this thing called the output and it's this array uh, because you can uh, output different things, right? So they, they did a really nice job here where you can do this output, uh, but it also has a thing that's called output text. Uh, and it kind of collapses it all down. And that's kind of what you want to show. So if you take a look over here at this API, this this first one here, right? I did this API examples uh, create. And, uh, it, it, you know, it creates a new open AI. Uh, it passes in the API key, which is, should be in your environment variables. And also uh, I passed in the environment variable for the base URL. Now, this example is just using the OpenAI base URL, but you could change this if you wanted to. So uh, in your in your configuration variables, we can do that. And I'll show you that's in the dev vars uh, directory here. So you just, it's really nice. Look, you say OpenAI responses. This is the TypeScript SDK dot create, and you're gonna pass it the name of the model. You're gonna pass it the input. Now note, I'm just passing directly that text. I'm not building a new message or anything like that. I'm pushing just the text there uh, for the prompt. And then uh, I'm returning back the response. And then again, I'm pulling out that output text, which is the, the default thing there. And the app itself uh, showed that here in this generated text section. So that's basically the, the real shape of how this, this feels. Uh, a lot easier to wrap, as you might notice. Um, uh, and then, uh, so ne the next one here, we're gonna do this uh, streaming generation. I'm, I'm not telling it any instructions. I'm just giving it a prompt here. Uh, so yeah, so let's see uh, what we can do here. So we'll say, uh, write, write a story about uh, the wonders of the OpenAI uh, Responses API. Uh, and you'll see that things will just uh, start streaming in as you might expect. Uh, it's really nice. I, I really like the way that the SDK works here. So uh, I'm just gonna say stream is true here, right? So on, on the streaming. And then I do a, a, a loop, right? A, a loop of this uh, using a wait. And if it is an output dot text, uh, output underscore text dot delta uh, for the type, because you get a bunch of these types that come by, then you just uh, write that out. Uh, and this is uh, and this is using the Hono streaming here, which I'm just using. Uh, the stream text comes from uh, the Hono library here, uh, and it just writes out each one of those chunks. And then on the other side, uh, uh, you you write that out. Cool. So uh, let's take a look at the next example that we have here. Uh, there's an interactive word game. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to show this off specifically is. Uh, some people get, get caught up on this. Um, in the chat style API, like the slash v1 chat style, you used to have to build an array and you would pass that array through. Um, and it get, could, could get a little bit clunky. Uh, one of the things that the responses API introduced was this concept of a previous response ID. So it would store it. Um, and, and by default, it does store things. Um, it doesn't use it for training, but it does store it. And you can turn that to false, but uh, but but by default this is the case. So so what, what you'll see here, all I'm doing is that as I'm passing uh, the current word, I'm gonna we're gonna do it one word at a time, and then we'll do the previous response ID. So uh, let's see. Let's so, so we're gonna type once. Little improv game here, uh, and so so it came back with a pawn, and you'll see that it gave, gave this previous response ID. And this is all the loop is that I'm doing to do like a chat, basically, right? 
So once upon a, and then it's going to come back a time, of course, um, I walked into a uh, taco shop. I did said one more at a time, but it's not. <laughs> it gave me a period. Awesome. Cool. Uh, you'll note two things here. I said you were playing a game of one word at a time. The user is going to respond with a single word that moves the story format. Only reply with a single word or perhaps punctuation if it's the end of the sentence, which is great. Uh, and I, again, just doing that loop uh, going across uh, word at a time, there, which is rad. Um, the other thing to note uh, that this is really, really powerful is... Um, there's these tools that are built in, and one of them, uh, one of the tools that's built in is called the code interpreter. Uh, so uh, I'll show you it here first. So uh, I uh, built some demos, uh, spent a few hours learning, and uh, then I walked uh, a mile to the store. So uh, what what this is going to do here is it's going to go off and it's going to hit. I tried to extract here and try to calculate uh, what your minimum wage would be. So let's take a look at this. Your job is to calculate how much time is spent based on free form text, uh, and then use that time to figure out how much it would cost uh, with the minimum wage of $15. I hope everybody's getting that, whoever is working minimum wage, and respond to the user with how much time you estimated the total amount they would have been paid. So it says uh, it would have been four hours and 20 minutes uh, of, of your activities. I would have gotten 65 bucks for that. Um, but what's cool is it's going, and I, I wanted to make sure that I, I showed in the response. I wanted to show the code interpreter call output so that you could see uh, what those look like. But I, I passed this array of tools, and there's a type of code interpreter. And uh, you can set these different types of uh, containers when you uh, specify it, but I just said auto uh, to let it decide uh, what to do there. So super neat. Uh, it went out and actually ran some Python code, which you can look because remember I said uh, code interpreter call outputs, and you can see here this, uh, it did that. It showed me the code that it had written, um, and then it went and did the estimate and all uh, that stuff and did the calculation for me. Uh -huh. Not exactly sure. Yeah, yeah, so cool. So so it, de it determined how much uh, I did, and then it uh, calculated that for me. So pretty cool, did the extraction took that extraction, pushed it into the Python file, uh, and it, away it went. Uh, really fun to play with. Think about what you can do in there, because you know it's Python, so it could do a whole bunch of things. It has its own little uh, container there. Awesome. Okay, so the next uh, demo is about reasoning, and you can uh, specify an effort of how much uh, reasoning you want to do, right? So the reasoning models, this one specifically, I'm using this 04 mini is the model that I'm using here. Um, so uh, you help to plan educational lessons. The user will tell you what they're trying to learn. Oh, man, I really want to learn about the uh, OpenAI uh, responses API. And uh, this is something that you know we teachers uh, have to do often. We think about what the prerequisites that are available. Now, this is going to run, and it's going to do some reasoning. And I told it to do it at a medium level. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, and again, I'll show you the response when it comes back of, of how it did. Um, you can, if you uh, have access to the organization, you can uh, change and make sure that you're able to generate summaries. So you could generate the summary of the reasoning that happened here, but you can tell it did a, it did a pretty good job. So it's talking about we need to have uh, basic programming concepts, uh, REST fundamentals, serialization. Uh, cool, yeah. So you could suggest these are all uh, prereqs for, for going and using this. So you could come and you can look at this. And uh, yeah, so if you did have, uh, the, you could see how many reasoning tokens we use. We used 256 reasoning tokens. And we did, uh, and so here it says reasoning. You can see the effort that it did. And you can actually get a summary and you can do different styles of, uh, of the summary here. And in fact, let me just use this to show you. If we do summary, uh, and I do a control space, you can see that I can do auto, concise, or detailed, and it will show you all the thinking that it did, which is probably what you want to do. Um, and if you stream, you'll get those reasoning bits cut that come through as well. Uh, and so if we, we look at um, the document here, if we look at this responses, and then you look at this, this streaming here, you can see the different things that come through. Um, and so uh, the, different, the different steps that come through as, as you stream. 
uh, through here. So here's reasoning summary would come through in a chunk. And uh, when you see it, it's like, I'm thinking about this and that's, this is what's happening. You could show that chunk of reasoning as it came through. Awesome. But let's move on to the next one. So, so that was reasoning. And now we will talk, let's do the function call we've done. So uh, what we're going to do here, I'll, I'll do it first. So, so uh, submit feedback about this demo. So I really love these demos. Uh, I am going to share with my coworkers. Uh, I wish there were uh, more demos about tacos because there always should be more demos about tacos. Now I'm going to submit this. And what's going to happen is it's going to extract. It's going to find the things and it's going to do a tool call. And that I defined here this uh, submit feedback uh, is a name of a function. I, I made this uh, tools array. And there's a function called submit feedback. And I actually have a little submit feedback function here. And it takes a uh, net promoter score, what worked and what could be improved. And uh, I'm just going to output this probably should be saved to a database. And then I'm going to return uh, back what happened here. If we look at the server logs, you'll see I really love these demos. I'm going to share it with my coworkers at 10. I wish there were more demos about tacos. So it extracted what worked and what didn't work. And you can imagine me putting this into a database, but it just extracted it from plain text, right? Uh, so the plain text came in, the feedback came in, and... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and what what I did here was I built one of the I uh, built a little message, right? So you can also still put messages in this way. You can put in the role with the user and the content, and you have a assistant as well. And uh, th these are uh, response input items. And the reason why I'm doing that is because first thing I did is I said the user is going to submit it. You tell them their feedback, and I want to ensure that you include the feedback submission ID in your response, which he did, right? And uh, and who has been assigned. And so we said that Bob has been assigned to re review your feedback. And that came from the function call. So the function call, I said success true, Bob, and I just gave it a random ID there. Um, so uh, I have those tools defined. I, I, put, I said that there's tools are there. I pushed those same instructions uh, through here that we just talked about. And uh, I did say that tool choice is required. You do have different states here that you can use. Um, so you can say auto, automatically fix it. Do not use a tool call. So you could have a, 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 a series of prompts where you don't want it to it. I'm leaving it as required just to make sure that it goes across uh, there. And um, you'll see that I hot, re hot reloaded. So that when I saved it, hot reloaded. So I'm just going to do it again. Um, I wish there were more demos. Um, I think they are pretty good. They're, they're pretty good. Um, uh, let's, let's see what that does. So we'll submit the feedback on here. The tool choice is required, so it is going to try to call that uh, uh, function. We should see the result here. Uh, it, it just decided that it was an eight, which is probably true, and I think that they're pretty good. Uh, it's cool. So now Bob has been uh, uh, successfully there. So, so what what's happening is I'm getting the first response back and I'm trying to find this one that is a tool call and I happen to know that it's the first one that comes back. Uh, I could loop through and see, uh, look up at all of the uh, response outputs and see that it is a function call and I'm specifically looking for ones that are called submit feedback because you could have multiple tools in there. Uh, I'm going to get back the arguments that came back. So if we take a look here, you'll see that the way that this looks, there's an output and the first one here is a function call uh, and the arguments here. So, so I'm just gonna parse those arguments. So it took the schema and it turned into what it needed. And then I'm going to uh, uh, push the result uh, that I get back, right? So I, I called that function, I called submit feedback with those args. And then I uh, pushed the tool call onto the input, right? So that so that it, it knew that the tool call happened. And then I'm also pushing this uh, type called the function call input. Now it knows uh, this, this input is a, again, the type of the response input items and it knows that it needs these things. It needs a call ID, which, uh, so you know what, which function is, is coming across. So you have this call ID, right? And then this is the, the ID of the output uh, uh, here. So, uh, and then I take that that same input, so I, I have that same input array from before, and I push it back. Uh, I push it back into uh, the responses API, and I get the final response. And then I, I've shown you both the first and the final here. So if you wanted to look and see what it felt like, you could see um, 
uh, the difference between the two. But basically, you're you're taking the results from that, so then it can use it to go forward uh, in things. It's it's really a powerful pattern, and you'll see a lot of that uh, in in this space. Let's take this a step further. So uh, uh, we'll do a quick review here. So um, I, uh, there's this relationship viewer because you can pull structured output um, uh, by default from this, this API and it's really nice. And if you haven't seen something like this before, it's really amazing. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna uh, generate a, a character analysis of uh, the Simpsons. So, so we'll go here. Uh, you could write your own thing up, but what, what this is showing off is really powerful is that you can use English to figure out and fill out uh, a structure. And in this structure, what I wanted to do, um, so we've got a, you know, basically just a story about the, uh, about the Simpsons. Uh, and I wanted to show um, this, uh, the ability to parse out relationships from here. So uh, uh, I have a piece of software that will, will generate a graph. In fact, let's do that. Um, and it requires things to have nodes and edges. Uh, so, so if you're like making a graph, you have like the certain nodes and edges and, uh, well, I'll just show you over here. So uh, sideshow Bob here is a node and Bart Simpson is, uh, connected to him. Uh, looks like <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's labeled family and antagonist, both as red, which might be true, uh, for everybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but here, yeah, you'll see there's, there's, a uh, uh, bleeding gums. Murphy is Bart's friend. Mr. Burns is a professional for uh, Homer Simpson, the boss, right? So uh, what it does is it takes, it takes nodes and edges, and I've just described uh, very, very clearly these properties of what is involved here. And it takes the text and it extracts it and it will push it into uh, this graph. Uh, so it's really a powerful uh, concept, and if you look at it, this is what, what got generated when I asked it to do. And the way that uh, I did that was I said, this is the text, the format is a JSON schema, um, I'm calling it relationships, and uh, I, I want to run that JSON schema, the same JSON schema that's up here. Uh, and pretty powerful. Uh, it's, it's really neat uh, what you can do here. Um, and of course, I don't need to use this here, but I could I could create a, a, a very structured piece. So what this does is it allows you to create structured output in the way that you need it for whatever app that you want to build. And I think that this is really powerful because anybody could write anything here. I could get it in the structure that I want to pass to another application like this one here that draws these graphs. I think that this is a, a super powerful and like, look at how small it is, right? So, and note, note I'm using this parse here. So I'm using the, the parse API. There's a lot to explore here and build. And this is just the starts of it. I think you've got six or seven demos that you could wrap now uh, and, and probably make applications with. Really powerful, all coming from this uh, response API. So I hope you, you enjoyed your whirlwind tour of the responses API, like I said, I think you're going to see it popping up all over the place due to how convenient it makes things to build apps on open AI models. So if you'd like to see more demos like this, just let us know. On the GitHub repository, there is a deploy to Cloudflare button, which will give you your own app where you can dork around. <laughs> Feel free to fork or clone this repository and use it responsibly. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you real soon.